This episode of Dentist TV is brought to you by foreverlearning.com, your one-stop shop for online verifiable CPD. And you don't have to take a test. Coming up in today's show, I have an interview with Dr. Amajit Gill, the president of the British Dental Association. We have a review on e-readers in the toolbox segment by Dr. Marty Jablo. We have 60 seconds of social media and also show you how going back to school can help you to attract new patients to your practice. Hi, I'm Marisa Kretzinger and this is the show that helps dental professionals like you to go from ordinary to extraordinary. <laughs> attended the British Dental Association's annual conference and exhibition and one of the innovations that stood out to me was a next generation profi powder called Silk, that's S-Y-L-C. Um, I attended the presentation on it as well as looked at the stand at the exhibition um, area and it was a really interesting product because it's made from calcium sodium phosphosilicate and that essentially helps enamel to regenerate so it's a remineralizing product as well as an air polisher and it also has the benefits of being a desensitizing agent um, and according to the studies and according to the people who um, promote the product it is odorless and tasteless so um, it's quite pleasant to the patient and it also has a greatly reduced aerosol so after you've used it your entire surgery isn't filled with with dust or particles in the air um, and so this product because of its remineralizing properties it can rebuild eroded tooth structure and it's also very useful in helping with extrinsic staining and getting rid of that and also using that as an adjunct to bleaching so this product I think is really innovative and if you'd like to learn a bit more about it or if you use it let us know and comment in the box below and there's also a link where you can read more about it before we go any further, I'd like to thank our sponsors, foreverlearning.com. Now, foreverlearning.com is a one-stop shop for verifiable online CPD for the whole dental team. And this company launched eight years ago and was the first system that brought you online CPD for the whole dental team. Now, one of the main things about the system that makes it so very unique is that you don't have to spend time away from your practice in order to earn these CPD points. In addition, there is no test required in order to earn these points. And the system offers you unlimited verifiable CPD options and it's all in one easy source. And on top of all of that, it automatically records and stores your core CPD hours for clinical governance requirements. So this unique and patent pending system is approved by the General Dental Council. So be sure to have a look at foreverlearning.com. While I was at the British Dental Association conference, I caught up with Dr. Amajit Gill, who is the president, the newly elected president, and I spoke to him about the future of UK dentistry. He has some really interesting thoughts on this, so let's hear what he has to say about the direction that dentistry will be taking. Hi, I'm Marita Kritzinger, and today I'm here with Amajit Gill, who is the president of the British Dental Association, and I'm going to ask him a few questions about dentistry and VDA. So Amajit, um, what do you think, what do you most look forward to being president of the VDA for the next two years? Travelling. It's fantastic because uh, the job requires you to be virtually an ambassador for the BDA, uh, both in the country and out the country. So you get you get a chance of meeting people. What is your opinion, and where do you see dentistry going over the next decade? Well, the BDA did some research with the Nuffield Foundation uh, about four years ago. And we published it called Dental Futures Towards 2020, and um, I chaired the group uh, where we had experts talking about where. Um, the money was going to come from because without money everything's a talk you, you need that business side to be viable and these guys we had people who are city analysts so they tell the city where to invest money in healthcare and dentistry and these guys were absolutely confident that now with the growing private side 
that there will be vaccines for the two major diseases, which are tooth decay and gum disease. If that happens, dentists will have to do different work. And they basically were saying there's always going to be a, a need to do remedial work, you know, normal drilling and filling, swapping existing restorations, that kind of thing. But on top of that, the, the main growth in dentistry is going to be health and beauty, which is a shock to a lot of people because they don't see dentists as being in the health and beauty business. But for health, it's prevention. So there's always a role. And prevention is not just the two main diseases we talked about. Um, in 2020, a separate organization, The Economist, reckoned that one in three of us are going to have a diagnosable met, uh, mental illness. And in general practice, I'm spotting it already with uh, the bruxing. You know bruxing where you grind your teeth excessively? Uh, well, um, I'm spotting that as a kind of growth area already where people are breaking things and you're fixing them. So, you know, prevention will be preventing that as well as care is imperium. So that's prevention, which is health. Beauty is it's already taking off. Um, some, so many dentists now are getting into Botox and fillers. Um, there's a, if you need an interesting character, there's a person just down the road on Hanover Street, Tracy Bell. Um, she got into doing Botox and fillers about 10 years ago. Um, she now runs a retail unit here in Liverpool, although she's based on the Isle of Man. And she's just recently opened up a hospital, so she's going into the surgical side. And as a dentist, that's amazing. I haven't seen the operation, but I know her style. She's very, I mean, she bought a nightclub here in Liverpool and she's made a retail unit out of it. She provides dentistry, uh, hairdressers, everything, everything you want to do to look good. So that's where you're predicting people, dentists need to be aware that that's where things are moving towards. When you look, our profession's got about 27,000 clinicians. It's 30,000 if you include all the people who do paperwork. Um, 3,000 already have undergone training for Botox and fillers. So one in 10 already, it's, you can see it's happening. And you know, that's without any kind of promotion. People are just seeing that it can happen. And the thing is, you know, for patients, have you ever, <laughs> when I did my training in it, I was watching these guys, I'm trying to find a pen, and they don't even know how to hold a syringe. And they were coming like this, <laughs> well, it's incredibly intimidating whereas dentists know to come around the back do it discreetly they know how to hold a syringe they know how to hide it and i can just see it working because these are the people they don't have high street premises normally to do it they don't have um, the, the surgical conditions in which you know everything's hygienically right to do it and they don't know how to hold the syringes whereas we do all, even local anesthetics before you do a filler they were drawing out uh, local anesthetic from a vial whereas we buy them, as you know, in cartridges. Yeah, yeah. So I just know we're well positioned to deliver on it. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time, Amuji. That's really interesting. And um, it's back to the studio. <laughs>Hey, this is 60 Seconds on Social Media. My name is James Erickson. Let's go ahead and get started. A lot of dentists I see make the mistake of joining social media groups and using their logo as their header. In fact, you can see a couple behind me here of Twitter accounts that I've pulled out that are using their logo. The problem is this doesn't help you connect with people in the social media world. The social media world likes to connect with people as people. If I were to put a logo up in front of my face, you're not going to see me, you're not going to connect to me, and if this is the first thing you see about me, you're going to know that I'm more concerned about being a big company and not as concerned about connecting with people. Whereas if I, get this out of here, whereas if I use my own face and my own name and everything about me to connect with people, they're going to be more likely to come to my practice because they're going to see me as a person and they're going to know that I care about them as a person. I'm showing a little bit of my personality. I'm showing a little bit of, of what I like to do other than dentistry and people really like that. So by doing this and using your own picture as your profile pic, you're going to know or you're going to see you're going to gain a bigger online following. It's going to be better for your practice in the long run. My name is James Erickson. This was 60 Seconds on Social Media. We'll see you next time. Not all marketing activities that you do at your dental practice need to cost the earth in order to get excellent results. 
I recently interviewed Nikki Rowland, who is a practice manager at Perfect 32 Dental Practice. And she told me about something really innovative that they tried, and it had fantastic results. As part of National Smile Month, their practice reached out to local schools in the area and took the team and had fun activity days for the school children. This included taking surgical gloves, blowing them up and having the children decorate them as a monster and there would be a prize for the best scary glove monster. Um, there were colouring in competitions and at the end of the day every child takes home a small little goodie bag full of little sample products with toothbrushing instructions as well as a little business card for the dental practice stable to it. A lot of parents were so surprised and impressed by this that they phoned in to the practice to thank them for giving their child a goodie bag. Um, and now it was, it was so successful and they've done this quite a few times when Nikki goes to the school to pick up her own children she recognizes a lot of the pa parents and the children as patients of the practice. So obviously that's something that's really effective. What do you do in your practice that's really innovative in terms of marketing and reaching out to new sources of new patients? We'd love to hear about that and profile it on Dentist TV. So get in touch in the link below. For our toolbox segment, Dr. Marty Jablo looks at e-readers. So over to you, Marty. Hi, I'm Marty Jablo, and this month we're going to be talking about e-books. Now, why am I outside here? Beautiful sunny day, because I want to show you the difference in things that are happening with e-books and why you need to know about the screens. What I have here is an e-reader, and it's the Amazon Kindle. And as you can see, you can very easily see the screen. Okay, this is simple. This is called e-ink, and it's not backlit, and you can read it on the beach, you can read it in your bedroom, but if it's dark out, you do need to light this screen. There are a lot of different e-readers that have been coming out, and e-reader devices, or devices that can read books also, besides the standard e-reader you can use a computer screen and then there's other things such as an iPad and even now there's some other color e-readers that are coming out uh, with color screens the problem with these devices is that they're backlit LCDs and even in bright sun you can't see anything so what you need to do is realize that all of these devices have limitations know what you're looking for where are you going to use the device and choose the appropriate device for your needs so if you're going to be reading outdoors an iPad a computer isn't the best thing for you you need an e-ink type of device like a Amazon Kindle if you're going to be indoors most of the time then a device like an iPad or one of these pan digital e-readers uh, will work fine for you so, again, choose the device based on your needs. I'm Marty Jablo. Thanks for joining me. This brings us to the end of the show. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this content interesting and relevant. If you have any questions or comments, please use the links below to get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. Coming up in the next show, I have an interview with Alan Rees, who is a dental business coach and Colby Wisdom consultant. And I also interview Laura Horton, who is a treatment coordinator trainer. And we speak about how the role of the treatment coordinator is changing the way we do dentistry and also how you can recruit the best team members that fit in with your practice using Colby Wisdom. Then we have um, best of the best section, find out which practice is featured here. And we have our usual 60 seconds of social media as well as a product review. So stay tuned and we look forward to presenting another great show to you then. I'm Marita Kretzinger and it's been a pleasure hosting Dentist TV, the show that helps dental professionals go from ordinary to extraordinary.